Hello students, in today's session let us learn about biodiversity, its definition, levels, values etc. with a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. All life is interrelated, we are all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied into a single garment of destiny, whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Let me elaborate on this quotation by citing the case of three farmers. Pratab, Mahendra Reddy and Adi Narayana are the names of just a few of the many small farmers of Andhra Pradesh who have committed suicide in recent times. In most cases, an intolerable debt burden drove them to take their lives. They had all borrowed money for their inputs into farming seeds, fertilizers and pesticides. Until about the middle of the 20th century, such small farmers in India needed very little input from outside. They grew a variety of crops and kept aside some part of the harvest as seeds for the next year. They used organic manure and natural pesticides. Even if one crop failed, there were others to save the farmer from ruin. Life was not easy, but the farmers were not in deep crisis either. However, India's population was growing and food was being imported. This was also the problem in many poor countries around the world. The solution came in the form of green revolution with the promise of plenty. The key element was new seeds like high yielding varieties, developed first in Mexico and then taken into many other countries, the new seeds greatly increased the yield per hectare. It was certainly a revolution in agriculture, but it came as a whole package. The HYVs or the high yielding varieties needed large inputs of fertilizers, pesticides and water. Further, the small number of laboratory developed HYVs replaced the large number of traditional varieties cultivated by farmers. With the active encouragement of the government and the international agencies, the green revolution was enthusiastically adopted in India. Food production increased and the country became self-sufficient. The green revolution however changed traditional agricultural practices. The farmers had to buy new seeds, fertilizers and pesticides every year. Soon the traditional varieties disappeared, leading just a few HYVs. In other words, diversity gave place to uniformity. The seeds came from National Seeds Corporation or other certified government agencies. From about 1998, another major change occurred with the entry of international seed companies into India. These companies need mass markets and they aggressively promote the use of a few varieties of seeds. The small farmer is now in the clutches of a new breed of entrepreneurs. They provide all the inputs at high prices, give credit at very high interest rates and buy the crops at low prices. A crop failure due to the spurious or low quality seeds, a pest attack or drought is often the last straw for the farmer. The farmer is perpetually in debt and often the only escape is suicide. The green revolution increased the yield but created problems like soil degradation, falling productivity over time, increased use of fertilizers, a greater propensity of disease and excessive withdrawal of the groundwater. At the basis of all problems however was the loss of biodiversity that is the topic of this session for us today. Biodiversity refers to the numbers, variety and variability of living organisms and ecosystems. The term covers diversity within species, between species as well as the variations among ecosystems. The field of biodiversity is concerned with the complex ecological interrelationship of species. Biodiversity is the earth's primary life support system and is a precondition for human survival. Now let us look at the different levels of biodiversity. Number one, species diversity. It is a number of plant and animal species 
present in a community or an ecosystem. It varies great deal between ecosystems. For example, species diversity is very high in tropical rainforests and coral reefs and low in isolated islands. In an ecosystem with high diversity, large number of different species of plants and animals will be present. Number 2, genetic diversity. It is a variety in the genetic makeup of individuals within a species. In the same species, each individual is different from the other. The evolution of new species depends on the amount of genetic variation. Number 3, ecosystem diversity. It is a diversity of habitats found in an area. It refers to the variety of forests, deserts, grasslands, aquatic ecosystems, etc. that occur in an area. Now let us look at what is the value of biodiversity. First, let us look at biodiversity purely from the human angle. The food that is directly consumed by the humans including the grains, vegetables, fruits, meat and fish are all part of biodiversity. This is the consumptive value of biodiversity. Goods of various kinds like fuel, timber, paper and medicines are derived from biodiversity. Most of our current food crops came from wild tropical plants. The majority of the world's poor depends even now on traditional medicines extracted from the plants. Several new drugs are developed by pharmaceutical industry are also obtained from plants and animals. A rosy periwinkle from Madagascar is used for treatment of leukemia. The bark of cinchona tree is used for treating malaria. Coca for anesthesia. Indian snake root or sarbagandha for hypertension. Many useful microbes have been identified. While some are capable of cleaning up oil spills and toxic waste, others can extract metals from ores. These are the productive uses of biodiversity. Ecosystems are wonders of nature. They maintain the biogeochemical cycles, modify the climate, remove waste and detoxify. They control pests and diseases naturally, control erosion, accelerate soil building and soil renewal. Biodiversity provides us energy, minerals. The ecosystem services provided by biodiversity are worth more than 36 trillion US dollars per year. More than this monetary estimate, biodiversity is indefinitely priceless since it is irreplaceable. Just being close to nature gives us enjoyment and even spiritual solace. Writers, poets, artists and composers derive inspiration from nature for their creative work. Aesthetic value of biodiversity. The biodiversity of the planet enables activities like wildlife tourism, nature photography, trekking and bird watching. Biotechnology and genetic engineering use the genes of organisms to make new types of crops, medicines, etc. Now let us conclude this session by looking at the glory and the heritage of India as a mega diversity country. India is often and justly described as a land of striking contrast. The entire northern region is bounded by the mighty Himalayan ranges and some of the tallest peaks in the world such as the Nanga Parvat and Kanchanjunga are found in India. In Indian mythology and popular belief alike, the gods and goddesses make their abode on the summits of these peaks. So do the sadhus and others who are wary of their material life. These hills have in recent years been rapidly denuded of their forest cover and one can only contemplate with sadness what the loss of forest means not only for the ecological welfare of both the earth and the human communities but for the cultural and religious ethos of Indians. It is in India's forest communities that the Upanishadic sages developed their ponderous philosophy and wrote the forest books and it is to the forest that Rama and Sita were exiled before they could return to claim their kingdom. It is also in the forest that 
one found relief from the maddening fury of city life so subtly captured by satyajit ray in his film days and nights in the forest though in general the hill regions are more scarcely populated than the plains below an astonishingly diverse array of ethnic and linguistic communities have been settled in these regions for centuries for the indian middle classes hill stations were places of retreat for the family from the britishers time if the himalayan peaks form an indelible part of the indian imagination so do the vast gangetic plains and the numerous rivers of india civilizations began around rivers and deltas and rivers remain an enduring icon of our national culture rivers are not merely great carriers of goods or passage ways they are the source of life and sustenance for millions they are harbingers of fertility and repositories of the sacred originating high at the cow's peak in the himalayas the ganga flows through the plains and empties out in the bay of bengal the holiest indian cities from haridwar to banaras grew along the banks of the ganga indian culture is so entwined with this holy river that the dying hindu wishes for nothing more than a sip of ganga jal as the breath fades away from his or her life with this let me conclude today until we meet again with more on the topic bye